Caution to greater operators. As a greater operator, if you are coming from a background of road maintenance or open pit mining, or maybe oil field work, one of the first things that you will notice is that when you are building streets, you will be in close proximity to obstacles. In short, you are usually working in an obstacle course. I hope I don't sound too negative when I say this, but in the first year of street building with a grader, there's a pretty good chance you will have an accident. I hope it is a minor one. You will probably also damage the machine in some way. Street building requires that the grader blade actually touch the concrete structures. In this video, I am going to show you some mistakes that I've made over the years, and by doing so, maybe you can avoid making the same mistakes yourself. Here we are placing some 63 mil. It's a uh, very popular reclaim material. I don't know if you can see it on camera too well, but there's three real significant high points on this arterial road. And both sides are a straight face curb. And I believe we're looking for a hundred, a hundred mils of asphalt is going on here. I wanted to talk about uh, this curb today and uh, how to work along it and uh, preserve the curb so you don't, don't damage it in any way. As you can see, there's no backfill right at the end of this curb. And uh, that happens quite frequently and uh, you just need to be a little careful when that's the case. And uh, you know, sometimes even if it is backfilled, the backfill isn't really uh, packed properly where I've marked this red circle is the place on the curb where it quite frequently gets damaged. And like I say, even if this curb was backfilled, it, it's, uh, the backfill probably wouldn't be packed very well. So uh, you have to be careful. You don't push these curbs out when you're running along them with your blade. Now, in the past, I've had to remove this type of curb with the grader. Maybe for it was put in at the wrong elevation or they just changed plans or something, but what I'm getting at is I know how much force it takes to move it and how much force it takes to break it. And be surprised, out where it's backfilled here and where there's a a good length of curb. It can take several tons to push it out. It's, it's, it's there. It's pretty stiff to move it. I'll tell you that. But where it really varies is, um, when you come to the ends. So you'll see here where I've marked this curb in, it was a black mark here. If you're cutting along here, with the grater. And as you get toward the end there where I've marked it in red, you've got to ease off on the pressure you put on the curb. You never really should put too much pressure on it anyway, but as you come to the end there where the red mark is, just barely tickle the curb. And if you don't, you may end up either pushing it out or breaking the corner off it right at the very end. So, you have to be careful with that. Okay, here we are working on a mono burn. Almost every job that you work on, you're going to be tying into existing. Now, if you mount this existing concrete properly, you can be very safe. Do not put your wheel out there where I've got that red mark. If you go out there, you have to break that corner off. But if you mount this existing concrete properly and pay attention to where your wheel is, you'll be safe. And uh, like I say, 
almost every job you'll have this type of situation where there'll be existing concrete to uh, tie into and uh, you know, it's possible that uh, in general, it wasn't even the company that, that put that concrete in there, so you don't want to break it. But like I say, if you pay attention to where your tire is, you'll be okay. Okay, here we are in this example. We are working on a lane, a back alley. And you notice where this, the existing concrete here is a private driveway. You notice how the corner there is actually undermined a little bit. You can actually see a little bit of daylight underneath that corner. And uh, it's really unbelievable how easy it would be to break that corner with that packer. Just barely touch it and you'd break that corner off. And uh, I want to show you in the diagram here uh, that I've drawn up how I want to emphasize how, how much difference there can be. Where the red circle is, you might be able to break that corner off with just literally pounds of pressure. Where I've made the black circle, it may take tons of pressure. That's how much it can differ. So you have to be extremely careful when you're coming up against this. You just barely touch that corner with a packer and you break it. In this example, we are working on a trail. And again, it's 63 mil with 3% uh, crossfall. And uh, the existing is a bus pad. As you can see, as I've drawn up that diagram there, we're looking for 75 mil along that bus pad. And the critical area, again, is the corner. And as you get away from the corner, you're, you're fairly safe, but boy, you have to be careful of those corners or somebody's gonna be re-pouring that pad. And as you cruise along here, another critical spot is when you exit this pad, when you're going, just going past it. Again, you have to be very careful Right there you have to be very careful when you're exiting that that you don't nip that corner off okay when you're cruising around on the outside perimeter of these bubbles you once you clear these obstacles with the edge of your blade then you have to be careful that your ripper doesn't clip you see Sometimes your ripper will come very close to the hydrant or to that valve. You just got to keep that in mind. Another thing is, here there isn't any string line, but if the string line is up, when you're on the outside perimeter of these bubbles, you have to be careful that your ripper doesn't get tangled up in the string line and pull the string line down. Okay, here we are placing uh, 20 mil gravel uh, along a straight face curb and here I am going around the CB and uh, I'm trying to be careful not to cover up the face of that CB so that I can so that I can see it so in, in, uh, in passes coming up that I can, I can actually see where the concrete is this step is so crucial because uh, if you do it properly it can save so much work for the labor crew to, uh, to clean up behind you. And uh, when you place this loose gravel in here, it has to get packed. And uh, I choose to just wheel pack it with my own machine. because Some people, some greater operators will work with the rubber and they'll rubber it and that's all, that's fine. I find it's just usually faster just to do it myself. I just wheel pack it once or twice with the greater wheel. And now, uh, I, th I believe we're looking for a finish grade here of 100 mils of asphalt. So I'll be trying to go for 80 mils here right now. I'll be trying to rough it in a little bit high. And here I am going around this CB and uh, being very cautious not to break it or damage it. 
And uh, this is what I really wanted to talk about. Because this video, uh, you know, the, the topic is caution to greater operators. I wanted to talk about uh, how not to break these CBs. Now, I've, uh, I've done some drawing on this uh, freeze frame here. Where the yellow line is, is where they, the CB, the concrete, quite frequently cracks. Right where that yellow line is. If you put a lot of weight up where I've made the red paint, that's a kind of a no-go zone. The red paint, no-go. If you romp around on there, and bounce around on it, you will probably make a crack where that yellow line is and that CB will have to get re-poured. I've seen it happen dozens and dozens of times. Now this concrete has already set up for, I believe, two days. So I might just very gently pack that face of that CB with my front wheel. I'll never run my back wheel over it. Here's what the road looks like ahead of me. I'll put my camera up so you can have a look at it. It's a beautiful country out here. This is uh, northern, the north end of St. Albert. Beautiful country. And uh, yeah, so you'll see the, see the windrow in front of me there. And that's, uh, that's what I'm placing up against the curb. And I'll do the same to the other side. Keep my camera on for a while. Skid steer there is uh, backfilling the curb. Yeah, you can see these tie ends, like where the skid steer is there. That tie end was just poured yesterday, literally. So you got to be real, real careful around those. And like I say, I will. Uh, that's about the right amount of quantity. Because I'm, uh, don't forget on the edge here, I'm looking for 125. There's just an ordinary parabolic crown here. I should move my front wheel off that window, I guess, and make it a little easier. You articulate, you articulate, I just articulate in a little bit. And uh, you'll be able to see it better when you do it that way too. To create these videos, I am using footage that I shot on the job site last summer. If you find these videos helpful or interesting, please like and subscribe. If you have some input, please leave a comment below.